Saturday, June 8th. I love this reading. I love the vibrations that are going on. Uh, this is your reconstruction era. This is the time that you want to be thinking about your biggest and brightest dreams. We want to be bringing them into the world, nurturing them into existence. And today we want to do a lot of just worship of yourself and your body, especially that yin, that shakti, that kind of feminine vibration. So I, um, because today the energy is so significant and can be so auspicious, if we work with it correctly, I'm just giving you a little extra information. So um, we have two like astrological things going on. Um, this is Western astrology, Venus in Gemini squared with Saturn in Pisces. So a lot of people will say that, you know, this is challenging and frustrating and it can bring up resistance and it can bring up some resistance when you have these squares. But if you have a heads up and you adjust your vibration um, correctly, these are actually the perfect ingredients, this kind of square, perfect ingredient for flow state. We can learn how to tap into, you know, cosmic vibrations and how to, you know, then tap into this flow state. You can think of this instead of something being difficult or hard on you, think of this or so much energy, you know, think of it as the universe is gifting you these vibrations and it wants you to co-create with it for your highest good and even for the highest good of others so that's the opportunity that we have right now so when you think of it that way instead of there's all this shit going on it sounds a lot better because it is a lot better and then we have this other thing um, mars entering taurus so I'm pointing this out. This is not really a big deal, but I'm pointing this out be because the long game wins. I've been saying this and I feel like people are like, that's just a thing you say and I'm going to go balls to the wall. Uh, and now the universe is saying the long game wins. Okay, so low and slow like a pot roast. So uh, this is what basically the universe is calling on us to do. This is the opportunity that we have to use and if we take advantage of the opportunity it's for our benefit okay but that also you know benefits other people and benefits the universe so um, it's this nice reciprocal relationship that we can have why not do it so it's calling on us to use acknowledge and appreciate our skills in a challenging way that's kind of what flow state is so when we are in flow we are using our skills and we are slightly challenged. Um, so that's kind of the magic formula, okay? Then whatever it is that we're working on, all these skills and you know how we apply all these, use, acknowledge, and appreciate in a challenging way should be heart-centered and it should include the vibration of gratitude. And again, this not only benefits us but it benefits the whole naturally and that's because that's because or you know what we're going to do is engage these higher versions of ourself that's what the universe is saying to to do this is why the universe is saying to do it heart soul third eye crown this is when you are co-creating not from your from your the place of your soul of the highest version of yourself and that whatever you do out of that vibration will naturally give back, back and recalibrate the whole. It will be the best thing for you and the whole. Um, and then also all the while, we wanna maintain some stability, okay? We want our root chakra to be stable and supple. We want this to be um, a good foundation um, because a good foundation isn't just a strong bottom structure. It includes the beams and the posts that transmit the load of the building, transmit the vibrational load of whatever you're building and nurturing into reality, into the ground, into the earth, into the physical reality. So all of these things that we're doing are engaging every single one of our major, you know, vibrational energy centers. 
And that's why yesterday's reading, remember I said I saw this soul star chakra up here and I was like, I was at the end of the reading and I'm like, I'm not sure what it's doing here, but it only shows up when it needs to show up and it doesn't show up very often. So I'm just placing that here with an awareness that it's going to be used. And when you're using all of these vibrations together, you really have this beautiful flow of energy through your vibration and they're all kind of going together at once then that's when, you know, you're kind of synced with your highest vibration and that's when your soul star chakra can become um, really active. So again, don't think of it as hard work. We're just going to be doing the flow. But I'm going to make it as easy for you as possible. So this is my goal for this reading and every reading. Um, I want to help you access these vibrations, understand them, and accept the universe's offer of co-creation and do it in the most efficient, effective, and joyful way. And so pretty much what I do is I kind of tap into the cosmic vibrations, right? What's, what's the vibe in the cosmos? Um, I typically already have the earth is vib the earth's vibration channeling through you guys um, so the next thing I do is I tap into kind of the collective human vibration or the collective kind of natural vibration which includes the earth and then I very briefly just dip back in and kind of go to the earth does this work for you <laughs> so that's pretty much how I come up with these kind of compound vibrational you know recipes that do that work in this, you know, effective, joyful, efficient way. And also, people are really busy. So um, not a lot of people have a lot of time for this. So I'm hoping by spending the time and doing this for you, it will make vibrational work um, available for more people. And then, of course, just remember, this is a collective reading. So while they're very accurate, I don't have any doubts about my accuracy, and, and when I don't know something, I'll say that, like, I'm not getting it, I'm not clear. Um, I don't have any doubts about this reading at all, and um, but, you know, it's based off of the collective vibration, so it's not the same as a personal reading where I'm going to look at this, I'm going to look at this, and then I'm going to look at, literally at you, um, but we're, we're going to get pretty close here. So here is what we're going to do. I put the time next to them just so you can see I this is probably more than I usually say to do and I would say do as much of it as you can um, but this day in particular I would really especially because we have the new moon um, that energy still floating around this day in particular you you will you, you will get the return on the investment of your time and your energy. Um, I really believe that. So we're going to start the day just quick intention setting. This can be, you know, super easy. Literally, I put a minute. Intention setting can be that easy. Your intention should be around the nurturing into existence of your biggest, brightest dreams. That's it. You set that intention. That's what I want today to be about. Now, if you can, starting your day slowly would be really helpful. So this idea of like really this is tapping into that Shakti Yin feminine receptive vibration and not just tapping into it, but really worshiping it um, and, and kind of massaging it into reality. And then you can sort of massage that vibration into everything that you're creating because this type of energy almost needs to be massaged into because it's a really a receptive energy. So if you can spend 20 minutes with yourself, this can be, I mean, I'll tell you like a bath, rose water came through really strong. So like a bath with rose water, you could do a massage like orange essential oil, especially on your sacral area. Um, you know, you can put on your lotion really slowly and just be appreciating and loving your body, doing it in a mindful way that'll also help out into your heart chakra. Um, do it for as long as you can, if you can. Following that, and these three things, like really, actually these, 
at least four things. I'll see once I get to the fifth one. If like you should do them in succession, like one right after the other. So ideally you want to have, you know, 10, 30, uh, between 35 and 40 minutes in the morning for you, for your goals, for your biggest dreams. If that means maybe you could get up a little bit early, I would recommend doing it. So do that self-worship. Then you're going to do this crown, third eye, chakra engagement um, with sound. So if you can find, um, you know, a singing bowl, I'll look, I'm sure there is one, and link it. Um, but we want sound for the crown chakra and the, um, let me write you these actually, the crown chakra, ideally higher frequency, 972, ideally 864. I know there's not a lot of 864, so doing these together um, would be really helpful. I would do that for seven minutes, just the sound, sitting quietly, um, you know, if you are not like a medit, you don't have to be meditating, but you know, if you're not used to sitting still for seven minutes, sit as still as you can. Um, all right, then we're going to do, okay, directly following this, we're just going to do some brainstorming. So this engages your throat chakra. This is your soul self. So you want to do it in this like automatic writing way. I would say you'll be done with this in five to 10 minutes. So, you know, you could set the timer for, um, five or 10, depending on what you think, or you could send it, set it for 10. And if you're done, but make sure to set the timer because you really don't want to go over. Um, and we want to, we're trying to keep with all of this, by the way, I haven't mentioned the solar plexus chakra. All of this is keeping it right where it is right now. Um, which is, this is what we're going for. Cool, calm, collected, nothing to see here. So, um, yeah, do, uh, this brainstorming and this is the stuff that you want to be working on. Like I have this feeling, you have an idea of like, I have all these things that I need to get done. So not a true kind of brainstorming, but this is the bones of a plan that we're going to make. Um, so just write again, quickly, all the things that you want to get done. That's it. Um, yeah, directly following that. Let me see. Let me pause here for a second. Brainstorming. Um, could pause between these. Um, I don't think I'd pause for more than 30 minutes. Um, and then we're just going to do a little bit of heart chakra work. Um, this heart chakra, um, do a chant. The chant for this is yum, yum. Chant that seven times. Put on 528 hertz for three to seven minutes. And again, still quiet. 528 hertz is good for the heart chakra, but it's a solfeggio frequency. Um, so it's also kind of good for your whole vibration. Theoretically, it like drives cellular repair. I think I haven't really been into that research lately because I've been researching like more on the meditation and ADHD stuff. But um there's, I think, some good research popping up for, like, sound actually having physiological changes in the body. I don't think anything's, like, you know, shirt up yet. But uh, anyway, it's supposed to, you know, help with cellular repair. Um, after you do that, you're going to go back to your plan and you're going to prioritize it. So, and you're going to prioritize it in that same, like, automatic writing way. So, I think no more than five minutes for this um, because you don't want the thinking brain engaged. You just want to be engaging this soul, this throat chakra, and now you've ramped up the vibrations in the heart chakra. So that's how the heart and soul are going to be prioritizing these things. So, um, and, and to make this easier for you, this is not like a strategic plan that you're turning into your boss, okay? This is a, your plan for your biggest, brightest, best dreams. It will be dynamic. There's going to be some give and take, okay? But what's important is that you do prioritize and that you say how much time 
you're going to spend on each of these items. You don't have to write out action items for each, you know, goal that you want to do, but you do want to, I would say it feels like an hour or two a day per task or goal feels right. But, um, no, that's very important for this kind of ritualistic thing that we're building. Very important for the throat, for the uh, root chakra, and very important to keep the solar plexus chakra in line. Um, is to just put amount, the amount of time that you want to work on it. You can adjust it if you sit down to work on something, and all of a sudden three hours has passed by, and you feel great. Fine, but. If your allotment was two hours, I would still stop. This is a vibe of you want to stop before you're full, okay? Um, so, and then just after this, if possible, but if not, you know, at the end of the day, really just do some root chakra work. Um, uh, you can do some herbs like clove. Literally, like I sometimes just open my jar of cloves because um, I keep, you know, a lot of dried herbs for my teas, and I'll just sniff it. Like, that will fill me up sometimes enough. So you can make a tea. You can do, you know, aromatherapy, but, like, clove, cinnamon. You could throw in a little bit of cardamom for, like, the heart, like green cardamom. And just kind of take a beat. You can feel into your body. You can go outside. You can hug a tree. Um, and you can do that for however long you feel like you want to do that. Um, and then... You know, you can, I wrote today or tomorrow, but it's probably going to be tomorrow, it feels like for most of you. But if you wanted to, hey, now, that's not what I meant to do. If you wanted to, you could do it today. But um, you want to introduce ritual to this plan that you've just made. And all that means is every day you go to work on one of these things, you ideally just open that up. Because again, you're doing it at the same time, same place. That's what you want. Work on these things, same time, same same place. Light a candle. If you can, that's the best. If not, just an opening um, kind of statement along with the candle or without if you don't have it. Um, just to say that this is, you know, what you're intending on doing. And then you're going to close out with gratitude. And again, when and where, just as many things you can keep the same as possible. This kind of ritual is basically, A, it's taking all this ethereal stuff and grounding it in physical reality. So all this stuff working together, this being, you know, whoops, this being non-physical, this being physical, and this being both. It's grounding this stuff and this stuff into here and here and here, right? So um, we're engaging everything that we need to do, but also with ritual, it's basically just saying to the universe, this is what I want. This is what I want. This is what I want. And then your action is like, and I'm willing to do it, and I'm willing to do it, and I'm willing to do it. I'm going to show up every day. That's what ritual is. It doesn't have to be fancy. It just has to be something that works for you and has these you know, opening, closing, ideally with light, ending with gratitude, and being sort of repetitive. And then other things that you can do today, um, <laughs> I don't know like what you're allowed to say on YouTube because I haven't been doing it for that long. So limit adult gymnastics. This includes with yourself, you know, if you can, like I'm telling you, it came through really strong. Like it would be best if you have a uterus to not have it be contracting at all today. <laughs> like it doesn't need that. And then um, you could also be creating using your hands, um, you know, like, clay and again you like literally you could go to like a children's store like target and buy clay or play-doh from the you know kids toy area um you could be painting with your hands you know literally like finger painting kind of thing you could do some fun painting your body you could do that with a partner or just having your hands in dirt and really i'm like i saw the vision of hands really moving around in dirt so um you know, tending to the garden, but really having the hands in the dirt felt very important. 